G'day, it's Donna here. In today's video, I'm thrilled to be a part of the Journal Jigsaw collaboration with Rachel Bella Crafts and guest designer Angela Kerr. I'm just one of 48 to 50 talented junk journal makers participating in this exciting event. Every day, two channels will showcase their skills with a tutorial continuing right up until the 15th of April. My prompt for this collaboration is birds and butterflies, rustic and grungy. I'm sharing this prompt with Antonio Makes. It's going to be fascinating to see how the same papers can be used differently by the two of us. You can find his channel at Antonio Makes. The overall theme of this collaboration is a garden story. In my video, I'll be showcasing the designer papers I used, which are also available for sale. I'll explain where to find them and how you can win one of many prizes just by liking and commenting on my video. You can also increase your chance of winning by engaging with all the other creators in this collaboration. I've left the details in the description box below. I'm also going to demonstrate how to make these easy embellishments using my tag templates, which I've donated as a prize. To watch all the videos in one place, check out the playlist linked in the description. Remember, liking and commenting on as many channels as possible will increase your chances of winning. And if you need help resizing a print, I've included a short section in this video on how to do it. Now let's get started because I'm really hanging to show you how I make my embellishments using this kit. The first one I'm doing is this rustic butterfly tag and I'm using Rachel Bella Crafts background paper, page 23. To get a nice rich colour, I've printed on 178 GSM matte photo paper. What you're going to need is a tag. Just make something up that you like and tear off the top part of it. And a piece of coffee dyed cheesecloth. And I'm using a white jelly roll pen. As always, everything we use in our embellishments are optional. I'm just going over my butterfly with my white jelly roll pen. I'm starting off by using a big dot and then as I go down the wing I make these dots go smaller and smaller. And I just do that all over the butterfly. I don't overdo it, just do it so it looks nice. I'm fussy cutting and I'm cutting right on the edge of the butterfly. No border on this one. I've got a piece of cheesecloth here, but what I want to do is I want to divide it in two because I'm going to use a piece on the tag and a piece on the front of my journal cover. And after we've made this butterfly here, I'm going to show you exactly how to make the butterfly with the little dome embellishment on the front. Now, I don't tear my gauze, I cut it and then I tease out the edges to give them that real frayed look. I'm going to make some antennas for the butterfly now and I just use a like a an embroidery or a crochet thread and I just tie a knot in a short piece actually you'll need two and then just cut them off close to the knot not right on it or it'll come undone just close and don't they look so cute now if you want to you can back your butterfly with a piece of fabric just glue it on and cut it out with a border so it gets nice and tatty. Gluing the antennas on is really easy. Just put a line of wet glue down the back of the butterfly and lay the antenna on top. Squeeze them together at the bottom end and they just open up at the top end. Now we're up to the easy part. We're just gonna assemble this tag. Put a bit of glue across the bottom of your torn piece. I use a piece of non-stick mat underneath my gauze because you will definitely push the glue through. 
If you press this down with your fingers, you're just going to get glue everywhere. So if you've got a non-stick bone folder, use this. These are great. Finish it off, just put a bit of glue on the back of your butterfly. You don't have to glue the whole piece down entirely. Just use a strip so the wings stay free. So if you love grungy, put one of these in your journal and where the gauze is, you can see the print come through underneath. Now for this part, I'm going to embellish the cover using one of these butterfly tags, but I'm going to step it up a notch and I'm going to put one of these clear dome embellishments on the front. My secret weapon are these goggle eyes. They are the 20 millimeter size and the plastic on them are perfect for using as domes. I'm also using these metal paper clips and on the back they got two little rivets. I gave this one to my husband and he just drilled the back out, popped the rivets because all I want is the little flower badge. I tried a few ways to separate the back from the dome. This way, way too dangerous. So I used my craft knife with a brand new blade on it so it's nice and sharp. And when I pierce it through the back, I can put the blade on the edge of the goggle eye and just slice around it. This way I can take the back off and it's still got a little ledge for me to glue down on my metal embellishment. If you come up with another way of getting the backs off these, let me know because for a cheap product, they're well glued. Once you break in, just toss the back away and empty out the little eyeball. Now you've got a little plastic dome to make our embellishment. I'm using alcohol inks to stain the plastic just to give it a little bit of an aged look. I'm using one drop of sunshine yellow and I'm just going to let it sort of spin around the dome. It colours really well. I'm not even going to worry about patching up the clear bits because it adds to the finished look. I made a second one and I used the colour rust because I wasn't sure which one was going to look best on here. So this is the rust one and this is the yellow one. So I'm definitely going to use the yellow. While it's drying, I'm going to glue my piece of gauze onto the cover. I haven't got a big piece, so I'm just gluing it across the bottom on the inside. So once I put the gauze over the glue, I'm going to use my non-stick bone folder to push the glue all the way through the gauze. I'm putting my non-stick mat in between the cover and the first page so I can turn it over and continue gluing this gauze down on the front of the cover. I'm going to glue this tag on now and I'm going to do it before I put the dome on. This way it, this glue will dry and I'll be able to come back and handle it without any worries. While that's drying I'm going to make myself a little butterfly embellishment. I've got this little mini butterfly punch and I'm using white so you can see it through the dome and I'm just going to glue these three tiny layers together. Once I've lined them up I'm just going to bend the wings either side of the body and that's just to give it a three-dimensional look. Do a test fit and look at that it's perfect. It's like a little shaker card. Now all I do is Put some glue around the ring of the dome and I'm just using the barely art glue. You don't want anything thick and gluggy. And then just sit that over the top of your metal embellishment. Just gently push it around the sides. Don't push it in the middle because it's plastic. So you just want to encourage it to stick by gently working your fingers around the edges. I'm going to use the E6000 glue because we're gluing metal to paper. I, uh, here's a good tip. I buy my E6000 from Spotlight in Australia in these tiny little tubes when they're on sale. And I do this because they last longer. I'm nearly at the end of this tube and already the glue is thickened up. So this is a great tip for you. Just glue that in place on your butterfly and just use the edge of the embellishment. Don't press that dome. It's a bit hard for me to shake it madly on camera because you can't see what it's doing. But it looks stunning. 
I could have also used it here where I've got this little blingy flower. This is a brad, by the way, a Tim Holtz brad. You can also use it as a paper clip and put a miniature dried flower in it, hang it out the side or up the top here, but I wouldn't use it as well as the butterfly dome. So now we're finished with this. I'm going to show you one of my favorites and that is this gorgeous little umbrella. All I did was fussy cut it out off one of the background pages, done some zigzag stitching around the top and then I glued down some, it's like an eyelash trim but it's only got a fringe on one side. You don't want to watch me fussy cut this umbrella again and then glue every little part of the fringe down. So I'm just going to roughly cut out the umbrella and using my very fine tip, just draw around the scallop part of the umbrella. I don't put the glue all the way across because it will just dry out. So using a pair of tweezers is best. And I just start laying it down and using my tweezers, I turn the corners when they go up and when they go down. And so just pinch it on the corners and turn the braid around and then press it with your fingers. You can really get this into a nice pointy shape. Do that all the way across the umbrella and you're done. But make sure you fussy cut your umbrella first. This is just a demo. This is where I'm gluing it, just to the inside front cover. So I'm just going to put glue all over the back of the umbrella and then put it in place. What I should have done though is I should have glued this umbrella down before I glued the dome on the front because of, I end up lifting it up and just pressing it down so I don't damage this little butterfly dome. What do you reckon? Have I managed to hit the brief? the little umbrella over the top of this embroidered doily and this little bit of gauze at the bottom is just, it just works. This next one, I'm just going to make a flip envelope pocket. This is still on the Rach and Bella kit and it's the one called envelopes. Just cut out the envelope that you like, distress ink it and make it up and I'm going to glue it onto this page like a flip out. I've left the inside of this envelope white deliberately so you can either tear and glue a quote on there or hand write on it. And then I just fussy cut some other pieces out of the kit and I glue them down so that it grounds the envelope to the page. One of my biggest problems is stopping, but I'm trying to keep this video not too long. All I've done is get one of the add-on pages. Uh, this one's perfect because it's a fussy cut page. And I'm using a stick of paper. This is a Kodak matte brand. I just print on that and when I'm ready, I'll fussy cut it out or I can fussy cut it out and include it in Happy Mail. But this one, so easy. I'm going to keep my rustic, grungy look going. And for this one, I'm going to use my tag templates. And these are the templates that I've donated toward the grand prize at the end of this collaboration. So make sure you check out the description box for all the details of the competition. The best way to use these are by placing the template directly onto your cardstock and with a craft knife just cut around the edge you're using it as a ruler but if you don't use a craft knife just get your pencil trace around the block and then cut them out with scissors i'm going to make a large eyelet hole instead of the normal little tiny one i start by punching a big hole it's less than half an inch and then I use my three quarter inch punch and go around the edge of it. I'm just going to color it with some distress ink to show it off a bit. Now I'm going to punch the same smaller hole directly onto my tag. 
and I'm just going to glue the whole reinforcement in place. Now I'm going to add this fabric. This is from Witchcraft Do You Do here in Australia. It's a gorgeous fabric. I think it's called Cotton Candy. But anyway, you can roughly cut off a, a short piece and then thread it through this really big hole and either glue it or if you've got a long reach stapler or something that's a, a bigger staple, just staple it together. It looks pretty cool either way. And what I do is I use a paper clip and I staggered them throughout the pages of my journal and they just poke out the top and look absolutely beautiful. So don't forget, like and comment on my video and everyone else's for your chance to win one of many prizes. And as promised, for those of you who have trouble with printing, I'm going to show you how you can print this image smaller. Just open up the image you want to print, then right mouse click, now left mouse click on print. Mine's opened up as portrait, so left mouse click on the little arrow here, and when it drops down, change it to landscape. I'm leaving my paper size on A4, and I'm changing my paper type from plain paper to matte paper. If you're using normal copy paper, just leave it on plain paper. Now we're going to change the size of the image. Go here to photo size and click on this little arrow down. You can pick any size you like to print. I'm choosing the 3.5 by 5 inches. Left mouse click on that and your image changes from that full page down to that tiny little print that you want to do. Now left mouse click on print and you're done. Now if you think this is a big waste of paper, think again. You will only do this once maybe. So it is really worth it to get the size you want to make the best journal you can. Well, thank you, Rachel and Bella, for inviting me to join this collaboration. I've truly enjoyed creating with these beautiful digi kits. You and Angela have put together a kit that anyone would love to use. And to all my beautiful viewers, thank you for tuning in to see my take on butterfly bird embellishments in a rustic and grungy version. If you'd like to see how I made my journal, check out the details on my website.